Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to this vlog for the 60th auction. Big Petrie back here again to take you through some of the interesting bottles that we have in this auction. There's a couple of themes as always, these bottles representing in this time not only uh, the other bottles of the same type that are in the auction, but some things that have happened in the last five years, because this auction is our fifth birthday. So thank you very much, because we wouldn't be here uh, in our fifth birthday if it wasn't for our wonderful buyers and sellers. So please, raise a dram, toast yourselves. Thank you very much for staying with us for five years. And here's to five more years and more from Scotch Whiskey Auctions. Um, we're going to get through into the interesting part of the bottles now, and I'll take you through these interesting drams um, for this month's auction. First up, we have Glenglasso. Now, uh, this is an interesting bottle in and of itself. It's a 45-year-old uh, Glenglasso, which was distilled back in 1968. And one of the reasons that I've, I've chosen this bottle is A, great whiskey from a, a wonderful distillery, but it's representative of some of the ebbs and flows of the Scotch whiskey industry over the years. And really wonderfully in, in the five years of Scotch whiskey auctions. Because this bottle um, was bottled, uh, as I said, in, two, in well, uh, 45 years old. But Glenglasso Distillery was mothballed in 1986 and it sat silently um, until it was uh, purchased in 2008. And the first spirit bottled as whiskey was in 2011, which was the year of our birth. So this bottle here has slumbered silently in casks and has witnessed a, a massive sea change in the history of Scotch, the way that Scotch spots and sold it, and it's a continued march across the world as the world's favourite spirit drink. So this whisky, great in and of itself, shows a wonderful um, chance to, to look at the industry and how it's changed. Next up, we have a cracking old bottle. This is... Um, Rutherford McKay's Liqueur Old Scotch Whiskey. Uh, this bottle is, I think, fabulous. It's, it's got the moulded glass. You can see the seams on it. It's a driven cork. Um, we estimate this bottle to be somewhere at the start of the, the, the 19th century, sometime around about 1920, that kind of era, probably verging back a little bit towards the, the start of the century. Um, and it's lost a bit of liquid over the years because it's got the driven cork, but it's a wonderful, great example of, I've said that phrase so many times, liquid history. A chance to taste spirit that, from distilleries that don't exist anymore. Next up we have, in terms of success stories other than just ourselves in the last five years, no whiskey has come onto the scene in the same way with the same emphasis and the same power as Kurosawa. Um, it is taking the world by storm in terms of the bottles and it's great that this little distillery from Japan is getting the recognition that it, it frankly deserved when it was still alive. So we've got a wee lineup of, of different Kurosawas here just to take you through and to celebrate this wonderful distillery that has been such a success in the last five years. First up here we have uh, a one from their wonderful No Cask. Now this here, this fearsome demon on the front, is a female demon called Hanya. And she is the demon obsessed with revenge, she has metal eyes, she's quite a dark and foreboding figure. And this is a 41 year old from their no cask range. A fabulous, fabulous drum. Next up, we have whiskey from dating back from 1967. Uh, and this was the oldest Kurosawa when it was bottled. Uh, bottled at still a really high ABV of 58.4%. And again, as, as Hanya was dark and foreboding herself, as is the liquid in this bottle. Absolutely cracking dram there. Next up we have, uh, this is from the 1999-2000 vintages. This is a cast strength release uh, featuring one of the wonderful wave wood cuttings. Now the reason we've chosen this one is because it's part of a set of three different releases from this uh, vintages cast strength range. Uh, we have the other two separately as well, such as the depth of Kurosawa in this auction. I really do urge you to get in and have a look about There are some really stellar bottles in there, uh, some wonderful whiskey. But it was just to show that the, the distillery wasn't, people weren't chasing after it uh, in, the, in the late 90s and the early 2000s. But now, with the rise of it, the success of it, we're, we're trying to gather together the last casks to save what history we can from this lost distillery. Um, so a wonderful bottle uh, as part of the set and just a great remembrance that 
we can, we can still taste the past. We can taste these great lost distilleries. Next up is a, a very interesting bottle, again from Kurosawa. Um, well, it's actually part of the, the ghost range. Some of the whiskey in this is Kurosawa, and the other is from Kawasaki, um, which is the grain distillery, which was also mothballed. So two lost distilleries for the price of one. As I said, this is uh, from the ghost range, and this one's called Time Slip. This whiskey was found in glass, and it was distilled, it was blended together in the 1970s, and frankly, just forgotten about. But thankfully, now it's been bottled, and now you get the chance to try whiskey from two different lost distilleries in a blend. Uh, and once again, these, these wonderful, this, this series of the ghosts, it's just a wonderful, wonderful bottle. The thing that got me interested in whiskey was drinking it. Uh, maybe the same for a lot of you here. And one of the exciting things we've got up next is the magic of whiskey. How it's created, why, how that magical influence between oak and spirit uh, and how that changes over the years. And what we've got here are two different Ardbeg single casks. The first one is 1189 and the second one is 1190. Now obviously those of you that can uh, count, uh, these are consecutive numbers. And the really wonderful, interesting thing about this is that the whiskey in these two casks comes from the same spirit run. So these two casks were filled from the same spirit run. They were then taken in and aged side by side in the warehouses at Ardbeg. And when they were tasted, just before they were bottled, they were found to be substantially different from each other. And this is the magic, the really exciting part uh, about whiskey that really, that really got me excited because it, they're different, but they're from the same oak, the same spirit run, they're in the same area. The magic that happened inside that cask, forming that whiskey, is something you can now try. They're, they're two separate lots, but if you were to buy them together, you could try this wonderful example, I keep using the word magic, the, the angel shit, all these little intangibles that go together to creating whiskey, this marvellous spirit that is the world's favourite spirit drink. It still marches on and this is a great, great chance to try, uh, I'm going to stop saying it, try that magic. So a lovely, lovely little thing from Ardbeg there. Now Ardbeg has a huge cult following. Big, big personality. Um, I'm not sure if I've told you before, but I remember once going through uh, the streets of Stockholm and seeing in a tattoo parlour a picture of a man's massive Kildalton cross tattoo with the Ardbeg A on it, such as the, the draw and the cult-like appeal of that dram. Also on a slightly quieter distillery is Bunnahabin. I'm a big fan of Bunnahabin. Um, and this one this is a 40-year-old, so a real wonderful aged whiskey from the island. And it's a wonderful label uh, that shows you the evolution and the the journey of the spirit from the stills of, uh, of the springs, sorry, of Margadale, all the way to the stills. There's a cooper going on there, and it tells you that story, that sense of place and heritage that Scotch is so famous for. The French got terroir with their wines, and it does give you a chance to taste not only a spirit but a place and a setting. And I, that's one of the wonderful, wonderful things about whiskey. Uh, you can try them from different ages and different vintages. You can try styles that no longer exist from distilleries that no longer exist. You can try whiskey from distilleries which they produced it in a different way. These wonderful things about whiskey are available for you to taste in the bottle. And they're also available for you at Scotch Whiskey Auctions. So, as always, I urge you to get inside, have a look around, and remember, Scotch Whiskey Auctions, don't lose your bottle.